Welcome to Neon Speaks. I'm Neon Devada Rosa. And, um, you know, we do this every week and we bring in guests and we never know where they're coming from. At least I don't ever know where they're coming from because they're always a surprise to me. And also another thing, I never interviewed the guests. I mean, I never pre-interview them. So I really don't know what they do or how they do it until AJ introduces them, which I'm going to allow her to do right now. Um, AJ, would you like to introduce this gentleman to me? So I know who I'm kind of talking to. Thank you so much, Ninon. Oh my goodness, I am honored and so privileged to introduce our very special VIP celebrity Hollywood guest, Stephen Bernstein. He is a American cinematographer, director, screenwriter, and author with over 30 years in the industry, the film and TV industry, with over 50 feature films and television shows, award-winning, Oscar-worthy, and he's done films like Decoding Annie Parker, Waterboy, Monster, Last Call, White Chicks, Like Water for Chocolate, and the list goes on and on. He's got a new book coming out. It's my great honor to introduce the fabulous, the wonderful, the extraordinary Stephen <laughs> Bernstein. Woo! Hello, Stephen. <laughs> Hi, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm glad you're not inclined towards hyperbole, but um, thank you. <laughs> What an old, um, when I was working with the Wayans, um, they, um, uh, uh, there was an old thing used to say, which is never introduce a comedian by saying one of the funniest people you're ever going to hear because then the bar is so high that you can't possibly perform well. So they would make a point when they induced me to do stand up once of introducing me as one of the funniest people that you ever heard. So, of course, I wasn't. So I don't know how <laughs> I did that that uh, introduction but uh, you are you are super I, I maybe i will sometime in my life but not this evening but thank you uh, uh for that and well, you know, only, only one small correction about oscar worthy in fact monster which of course i shot with charlie theron actually won the oscar so not only was it oscar worthy but it it won an oscar it won it as well yeah. you know Stephen, it's amazing and then i i sort of get to hear a little bit of who's coming on the show and who am i interviewing and what's going on and, you know, I lived in Hollywood. I lived in, in Bel Air, actually, and I knew a lot of the stars there and, and you know, a lot of the people. Hal Roach was a very, very good friend of my husband and I for many, many years. So we knew a lot of stars, there, a lot of people. I, I think I met you at one time. I recognized you and I think I met you at one time. I didn't look like this. I was much younger. <laughs> we're all i'm sure you were lovely we we're all younger once and and uh, to meet a, a, a middle-aged jewish man in hollywood it's a rare occurrence so um, i'm sure you would remember it yes yeah i remember i remember it well so you know um after listening to aj introducing you and, and your accomplishments how are you feeling right now? How are you feeling with all, you know, you, you, she's kind of, AJ has reminded you of all this that you've achieved and all what you've done. How are you feeling? What a great question. Um, you know, it's an odd thing, isn't it? And I think that's probably what you're going to, is that um, we aren't our achievements. We aren't what we've done. Um, we're where we are at that individual moment. I, I think our experiences give us um, some wisdom um, and some perspective, ultimately, so that we realize that um, nothing is ultimately epiphanal. Um, we also recognize that whatever small agonies we have um, will probably uh, recover. Uh, it's a matter of really perspective. So the sadness of growing old is you have- um, Older, older, you're older. not old yet. <laughs> you have older. fewer emotional, emotional highs, but you also have fewer emotional lows. But rather than um, getting what you think you wanted, uh, you acquire, uh, as I say, a measure of wisdom, which gives you some level of peace. So in the end, uh, I'm not impressed by myself, um, nor, am <laughs> yeah. I, nor am I deeply disturbed by my many failures. Um, I just accept it's all part of the journey. It is all part of the journey, but it's, it's amazing because um, the journey really never ends. Uh, we're still on a journey. You you are still on a journey. Um, I'm quite sure you've got some movie somewhere floating around that you're going to see, going to put out there, or you're halfway down, or you're going to do it. Um, what do you have in in? As they say, what do you what do you have in the can? Well, we have we have a few things. Of course, the the big, the big thing is um, I've I've 
decided to make a summation of uh, all the things that I've learned about uh, creative process, about because what was unique, if there is a uniqueness about me, um, is that uh, I was a cinematographer on uh, major feature films for a long time. Uh, you mentioned Monster, of course, but also films like SWAT and uh, Dolores Claiborne and uh, Like Water for Chocolate and the films of Noah Baumbach and was, uh, uh, Noah was a two-time Oscar nominee as well. Uh, and lots of other films because I worked with Helen Hunt, the Oscar winner, Samantha Morton, um, uh, all these interesting people, but not only as a cinematographer, then went on to be a screenwriter and then a director of feature films and a producer of them. And I've acted as well. So uh, and wow. a bad actor. I hasten to add a bad actor. Uh, but I got uh, the, the advantage of perspective, of seeing the same thing from many different sides. And I began to recognize that there was a consistency um, to the understandings of the people who do their jobs best. And that goes to the way they use their creative process. So um, uh, Heinemann um, uh, and an a, a imprint of them called Rutledge approached me and asked me to write a book about my, um, you very kindly said 30 years, but nearly 45 years in the film business uh, and explain how people could go from the inception of idea to its execution as screenwriters, as directors, as actors, as producers, as cinematographers and production designers. So it's comprehensive and you see, uh, it's called um, the uh, Filmmaker's Creative Process and it's coming out um, early, early next year. Meanwhile, I'm writing a TV series for uh, a British uh, a client. Um, oh, I'm TV glad TV. they're British. Yes, well, I was- we'll keep it in the field of being the British. <laughs> I lived I lived there for 26 years, so it's- Oh, uh, where did you live? Um, I lived in London, um, yes. just off Lambert Grove. I lived in uh, Hempstead. I lived in uh, um, uh, Oxford Gardens, Cambridge Gardens. You know all these areas. That I, I know all of them, yeah, yeah. Do you know, yeah. I wanted to go back on something you said. And you were talking about the execution of all the different roles that well, certainly that you've played, but also how everybody else has played them. And it's so funny because we have we have it within our body and with our, in our minds and within, within what we want to do. And then we execute it. And sometimes we execute it completely different to what we had planned or what we wanted to do and how we wanted to do it. And how is that? Is, you've noticed that a lot because you have obviously been, you've played so many different roles, but you've also seen so many different roles. How does that impress you with some of these very, these well-known directors and producers? Well, it, you know, it's a combination of, of, uh, of planning and, and then uh, discovery. Um, mm -hmm. You, for example, when we're making a film, we'll storyboard it, we'll of course write the yeah. screenplay, and we'll work out what we think is every single detail, and we have to. There's a fiduciary uh, obligation in that if we're going to make a film, we have to do it with some efficacy. But then once you're on set, what I find in directing actors is there's something that's discovered by giving them some creative freedom. For example, I'll mm -hmm. say to actors, if they stumble on a line, they should continue. If they feel a line isn't organic to them or to their character, uh, whatever comes to mind, they should say, trying to get them to be in the moment and to rely more on their intuitions rather than their intellect. And it's really the balance between discovering things in the moment and then planning things before you arrive on set that I think produces the best uh, results. You know, people who are uh, uh, anal retentive and obsessional will plan out every single thing and then you lose creative spontaneity and there's something magical missing on set. The same token, when everything is, is unplanned and everything is improvisation, the sets become so chaotic that um, they, they can be a bit of a nightmare. So there's a balance. So you have to keep that balance. I have to keep it in line. And I also know a lot of the writers, um, you know, when they write a line, they want you to say that line, how that line is, as a lot of them like it to be a Zach. But at the same time, you just brought something forward about the actor might change one word or some word to make themselves feel more comfortable in delivering that line. There's even directors like Mike Lee and, and uh, me who um, <laughs> will use improvisation with actors in the pre-production to discover uh, more about the character. Yeah. You know, it's very interesting when I, would, when I teach screenwriting and I ask my um, students if they can tell me their stories, they can always tell me their stories. When I ask them to describe their characters, they can only do a line or two because the character is serving story. But in fact, 
what we're all preoccupied with is the examination of the human condition, which is character. So really what you want to do is explore character in more detail by allowing your collaborators, your actors to explore who these people are, use improvisation and then integrate that into your narrative. So when I write, I write free form without any plan, without any outline, without any idea what I'm gonna write. I write to discover what I'm going, what I'm thinking, and then I go back and rewrite. And rewrite it. Mm -hmm. So you're, it, what I would say that you are, um, Stephen, you are extremely creative. One thing I want to find out, I want to find out, you've done many movies, you've been honored and everything else. When you get that phone call, you get that letter or whatever you get to say that you've been nominated, what goes through you and, and what sort of, you know, you've got to have that like that, boom, that jump in, in the heart, you know, you're human. And you've got to have that, that feeling of like, me? <laughs> What happens? It's oddly depressing, um, really. It's it's, a, it's it's first you're excited, um, and then there's a sense that uh, oh, this is the moment I I thought I was waiting for when I am transmogrified, and then you discover that you're the same person after the nomination or the win <laughs> that you were before, and there's few things more depressing um, than that. Um, they say the saddest thing uh, is is not only not getting what you want, but getting what you want, discovering that it wasn't all that fantastic. Now that isn't to diminish any of the uh, recognition no. I've got, I'm delighted to have received it. But as you said, right at the beginning, this journey is about something entirely different. It's about self-discovery and understanding. And it's not about being recognized by um, others, though I am very appreciative. You know, it's funny, Carl Morden, I met Carl Morden many times. He was kind of a, a, not a friend friend, but we met him when we were in his company a lot of times. And he turned around to my husband and he said, you know, he said, I have just the same amount of job as you have. He said, you have a job. He, my husband was in real estate. He said, and my job is acting. And he said, it's exactly the same thing. We, we both have a job. We both make money, uh, but we're both... I'm not, I don't want to say the same, but we're both the same. You have your job, I have my job. And it was such a, a beautiful feeling of how he felt about himself because he was a very modest man. He was an incredible man. And once, you know, you get to know him, he was a little bit shy. And so, you know, these actors, everybody has this illusion about these actors and everything else, but they're just regular people, a lot of them, are they not? Uh, I think they are. I think everybody is. And with their fears and their graces, um, their inspiration and their limits and their failures, it is mm -hmm. uh, the human, uh, the beauty of the human experience. In fact, what allows audiences to enjoy performance is an empathic bridge when we see, but for the grace of God, ourselves in the performance of an actor. That's why I like imperfections in performance. That's why I like actors to stumble. That's why I like improvisation. That's why I like the humanity of the ordinary face. Um, mm -hmm. The idea of the porcelain beauty, I think, is in some ways a barrier for a real connection to audience. And as filmmakers, as artists, we're about making that uh, connection. Jim Carrey gave a beautiful speech at the uh, Golden Globes where he said, I'm Jim Carrey, um, you know, a two time Golden Globe winner. And, and if only um, I could be Jim Carrey. Um, uh, three-time Golden Globe winner, then I'd be truly happy. And of course, he's being ironic because it's not the number of awards uh, that you win that's significant. It's this more profound understanding that that, uh, that we're referencing here. So you sound like, if you like Jim Carrey, it sounds like you would like to have been um, a comedian because I mean, this, this guy was funny. Well, still is. <laughs> a funny guy. Well, he's gotten much more serious now of late. And of course, he's, he's yes. left a lot of... Uh, the comedy behind. I don't look. I, I'm fascinated by 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 the nature of comedy. Um, uh, it's a dangerous thing as a writer um, or as a performer because we're all so anxious for validation yeah. that a laugh um, or if we go the other direction, a tear seems a validation of what we've either performed or written. But very often, it's not going to the bigger idea that we should be exploring that will get the more a uh, profound response. So, you know, mm -hmm. comedy is a fascinating thing. And I've done, uh, I guess I, you could say I've shot some of the biggest comedies, most successful comedies of all time. Yes. And, and yeah. White Chicks and Little Man and, and Scary Movie and Half Baked and all the rest. And I've worked with um, some brilliant comedians, but it's very interesting how intellectual comedians are 
because in the examination of comedy really becomes an examination of cinema and of art, if I don't sound too pretentious, but I think it's true. I, I think you're absolutely right. And I think sometimes the comedians like to let people know that they can be serious as well. Um, AJ, I know you're sitting there, you're dying to ask Steve something. <laughs> Go ahead. I really am. I have a dozen questions, but I'll just narrow it down to one or two. Um, Stephen, I just wanted to ask you, what was it like working with John Malkovich? Um, John was in my last film, um, Last Call, which is um, was in the, <laughs> brilliantly got released in the theaters in November, which is in the heart of the pandemic. So um, <laughs> it's every filmmaker's dream is to get your get your major theatrical release when no one go to the cinemas. But uh, it's good that I got a uh, <laughs> joke about uh, our, our shared tragedy uh, and more tragic for others than obviously for, than for others who are still here and living. But um, it's now available on Amazon and, and uh, on Apple and everywhere else and is being widely seen. You know, John is a delight. Talk about comic. Uh, he has great comic uh, timing, a great understanding of, of people, a great collaborator. Um, and, you know, something that you're referencing on before about the celebrity around actors. We don't realize that they are ordinary humans as well. Yes. And um, I noticed when John arrived on set, he came with an aura that he was, uh, you know, would almost intimidate um, everybody else because it was John Malkovich. There was even a film made about being John Malkovich. And now John Malkovich was there. And I've been doing this for 40 years and worked with actors from the Royal Shakespeare Company to, um, you know, 30 or 40 Oscar winners, et cetera, and not easily intimidated. I remember the first day giving my first note to the first actor I had to give a note to, which was John. And as I walked the long way, because it was on the other side of the set, I heard my secret voice, which I hadn't heard since I think I was 11. <laughs> uh, say, You're about to give a note to John Malkovich. You're about to give a note to John Malkovich. You're about to give a note to John Malkovich. I came up to John and I, I said, John, it was great um, for the most part, but I was just thinking, would he be thinking and gave him the note and I waited. And then the little child voice said, you just gave a note to John Malkovich, you just gave a note. And John said, great note, yeah, let, let's do it again. I, I've got an idea. And he did it again, and it was, it was better. Oh, so right. it's yeah. funny how the fictive world and the real world conjoin. And, uh, you know, I often say the real world doesn't seem real until it resembles fiction, because we live in our fictional world more than we do in our real world. So in that sense, um, I gave the fictional John Malkovich a note. And the real John Malkovich uh, validated me. So he came uh, out. And that's gave beautiful. Thank yeah, you gave so much you for that. that. Thank you, Stephen. So you haven't. You said you had a, another one, AJ. I'm giving you lots of time here. Go ahead. <laughs> I do. Thank you so much, Ninon. Um, I wanted to ask you, John. Um, I, we we talked oh, about John. Uh, shame uh, isn't here, but John. <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> I, I knew I knew you would like that because you just said a moment ago, Stephen, that you like the natural. So that's me. Um, <laughs> well played. Well played, AJ. Well played. Thank Tuesday. you. Sir. Who are your favorite artists who inspire you, Stephen? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to have worked with every actor I've worked with and none of them are ever difficult. So let me say that officially. And my publicist, it was literally in the next room, will be happy to hear me say that. Um, and I wouldn't work very long if I had a complaint about any of them. Look, um, the creative process, which is what my book's about, my new book's about, is a difficult thing. And as Ninon was referencing before, everyone gets there in a different way. And sometimes um, actors um, struggle to get there. And it means that those around them um, um, share or witness that struggle, which means it can be difficult. So uh, it doesn't mean they're a joy to work with, but the result is a joy. So I am fascinated by all people in all their complexities, um, their, as I said, their grace and their limitations and to watch how people who very often are in their own way overcome those obstacles and achieve things I always find fascinating. So I can't think of an actor I prefer to others because actors who are less skilled, um, I enjoy watching them still give skilled performances. And those who have a natural ability, uh, I marvel um, at um, the, 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 what, what they've been given. As for who I admire, um, I think people like Charlie Kaufman, um, who is one of our most important screenwriters, an iconoclastic, original, who bucks the orthodoxies, who violates all the rules of the system and creates things of real original genius. 
um, that's difficult. Um, as I said at the beginning of our talk, uh, there's so much financial pressure when we're making films to guarantee a return, to do things as they've always been done, to follow the rules and the orthodoxies, because if you violate them and you fail, um, they presume you violated because you, uh, you, you changed the rules. To uh, change those rules and succeed is an act of great courage. So Charlie Kaufman's done it on films like uh, Adaptation and Being John Malkovich and, and others. Uh, Mike Lee, who I mentioned earlier, who uses improv, again, has revolutionized the way we approach the film. John Cassavetes uh, was another mm -hmm. one, um, mm -hmm. Orson Welles. It's the people who do things differently, which give us as artists new eyes to see the world. Um, those are the people um, that I uh, admire. Not that those who I work with in the industry who are very successful, who are more conventional in their approaches, aren't to be admired in their own way. But there's a special courage needed in film to take risks, because when you fail in film, uh, forgiveness is slow coming. <laughs> very slow coming. I the love that. I, yeah. The question I'd like to ask you is, um, what sort of movie or what do you think that should come out now? We've gone through an awful lot of havoc. We've gone through this staying home. We've we're all wearing these masks and hiding our faces and all, I mean, a, a lot of people have taken on different roles as to what we've all been through. What would you like to see coming out now to sort of um, calm everybody down, which I don't think that's going to happen, but to sort of, you know, bring back life or bring back something? It's a great question. You know, um, there's certain, well, there's a great TV series out right now called Ted Lasso. I don't know if you've seen it, but um, no. it, 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 it's a, 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 an American who's transplanted in the UK. And the show is it's about many things, but it's principally about kindness, which there's a long strain in American cinema in particular of populism, going back to Frank Capra um, and others like him. Um, Francois Truffaut in France was another of that same school, Renoir, which goes to our shared humanity. Um, the, the kindnesses that we can uh, offer each other, the decency and the righteousness of ordinary uh, uh, humanity, uh, I, I think is what we very much all need. Because ultimately, despite all the contentiousness, um, we, there's more that we share than, than makes us separate from each other. Uh, most of all, we all suffer. We all live in fear. Uh, we all have a need. Uh, mm -hmm. We all need love. Um, these things, for whatever our persuasion or view is, are universal. And it's significant and important that we remind each other of that. And who is to do the reminding are our artists, um, which yes. include film yeah. as our arts. So as artists, I think we need to say to each other, uh, let's act with decency, but also let's act with understanding. Because mm -hmm. generally, the worst and most aberrant behavior comes from fear rather than real malfeasance. So I, I think that's what we need, or at least I need uh, to do. You mentioned comedy. You know, mm -hmm. comedy very often isn't taken seriously, but what is more uh, delightful than to cause someone else to laugh, to find some small uh, joy um, mm -hmm. in, 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 in their darkness? I think you're right, Nina, though, that we have to put this world back together. Yes. Uh, and to do that, there has to be a commodity, a commodity of, of purpose um, or a vision of purpose. And to that, I think it, it goes to this, this concept of shared decency. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And the reason I, I asked you that question is because you're in the entertainment business. You bring up films, you write films, you see films, you see actors, you see these people presenting to the world. And a lot of people look at it and take notice of it and, and want to follow it. They want the excitement, they want. So I'm, I was thinking it would be great if we could try to get a movie out there or something for the yeah. world, not just for America, for the world, and try to bring people back together again. We are all human. I don't care what color we are, what religion we are, I don't care. We're all the same. We've got females and we've got males, and this is what we have. And It's all over the world. We might have different color skins and we talk different languages, but basically we're all the same. We know we yeah, all want I think it's same. important to make, I think you're spot, I think making films about people. You know, yeah. super, superheroes are lovely, and and uh, uh, I, I don't want to deny uh, you know thirteen year olds um, any their, whatever pleasure that gives them. No, but no, I no. think to see real people in movies and television shows doing real things and being imperfect, 
what mm. happened with the dissolution of the family and us relying more on the fictive world than our ordinary world is we get, didn't get to see the inconsistency of our aunts and uncles and cousins and, and sisters and brothers and extended families when we realized that ordinary people behave abominably, but very often from ignorance rather than real cruelty or, 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 or ignorance. Yeah. So I think the ability to learn to forgive uh, can come from new paradigms that if, if we're gonna rely on the fictive world, let's put it in our films if we can't put yeah. it in our family. So let's make films about imperfect people and imperfect people finding some measure of redemption. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Um, one, I don't. I know we don't have much time. Uh, I'm going. I can just see that AJ is on her toes, saying, "Nina, we've got to cut out soon." I want to ask you one question: What would you like to say to the younger generation out there? Because I'm very fond of the younger generation of how to sort of become an actress or an actor, either way. Or, and what would you give the best advice for them to do? Well, my advice now, as I've gotten older, has become more stoical, but I think also more, more um, insightful. Um, the old virtues are the most important ones. If you want to be an actor, don't ring me up or send me a letter or send me a headshot and say, please give me an opportunity. Um, or stop, I was on the street, as I once was stopped with a well-known director, and someone said, who's the guy who made you successful? If the most successful, uh, successful people that I know have worked really hard to be successful. So master your craft. If you're yeah. a cinematographer, practice. If you're an actor, uh, appear wherever you can. Study, uh, read, uh, buy books, go to see films, go to plays. Uh, and if you master your craft um, through steady uh, application, then the opportunities will come. But to be relentless in the pursuit of opportunities without the perfection of your craft um, is not going to lead anywhere. So I, I think that's the saddest message, but it's, uh, I think, ultimately a happy one. Work yeah, really but, it, it, but it's real. You've, you've just told the real story. Is it, and I don't care whatever you go into, if you're going to sell real estate or you're going to be a plumber, whatever, you've got to practice. You've got to, you've got to do your service. You've got to yes. know what you're doing and go there. Um, and Neil, and I wanted to say, you know, he Stephen Bernstein is our favorite scholar and poet because he leads with his heart. And mm -hmm. it's it's wonderful, Stephen, how you describe the philo philosophical and also spiritual responsibility of the filmmaking process in Hollywood. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your wonderful artistry and filmmaking. It's absolutely beautiful, isn't it, Ninon? I, I think it's amazing. I, I think it's amazing to have you on our show, Ninon Speaks, and to, to give people the example of what it is like. You are just a person out there, the same as everybody else, your talents are in, and you'll use your talents and you've used them in many, many different ways, which gives people out there that they can do the same thing. Never, you know, put your talents out there. If you've got this talent, then use it and go for it. And that's what you did. Um, it's time up. It sounds like time is up. Time is up. So, well, I would like to thank you, um, Stephen, um, for, for giving us your time and giving us all, our audience your time and the perspective of what the film, film industry really is and how it is and how you can slip up a line and it doesn't matter, just keep moving forward. I think that's amazing. I want to thank all our audience out there too for tuning in. And also we're on Roku, which is amazing. So uh, we're going up the ladder. We have only been out here with Ninon Speaks for about a year and three months, not very long. And of course, AJ is my, uh, my new producer and she just takes care of everything and amazing. Stephen Bernstein, thank you a million. Absolutely amazing. You've given a, a fabulous message out there. Thank you so much. Great thank speaking you. to you both as it happens. I, I wish you luck with your program. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank bye you. Bye-bye.